Hey, how are you? What's going on? I haven't seen you in forever. I haven't seen anybody in forever. Right. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks to John for buying me a coffee at ChewingTheFatBR.com. I certainly do appreciate that. And the folks that have been leaving reviews and uh, ratings on your podcast platforms. I certainly do appreciate that. Uh, it's uh, been an interesting kind of couple of weeks here as the podcast has had to transition to a different host. That means nothing for you. Hopefully, you're still <laughs> able to find the podcast as in you normally would. Uh, so uh, if you run into any issues, let me know. There is an email form on uh, chewingthefatbr.com, and that way you can let me know what's going on. Of course, you can shoot me a, a message on Instagram as well at chewingthefatbr. Uh, just to get that technical stuff out of the way, because I am so excited to reconnect with my guest this week. Please welcome an old time radio friend. Not that we were, <laughs> not that it's like old timey radio. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. Let no. me tell you, well, sir. Let me, say, let me tell you what's going on. Sir. <laughs> Please welcome Michelle Mitchell. Woo! Yay! I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy for you to be here. <laughs> this is so. Oh. Man, this is this is the <laughs> highlight of my day. Uh, um, Michelle and I, uh, well, well, I had heard Michelle before I actually met her uh, <laughs> from from radio. But uh, back in the old Y one hundred five days was back where, in the olden days. Old, olden days <laughs> uh, over there on Georgia Avenue is where I got to meet uh, Michelle and work alongside her. And uh, uh, as I say often. You know, radio and television, they're some of the most highly functioning weirdos you'll ever <laughs> want to work with. Every station I've ever been at, I was like, if you made a TV show or a movie about these people, I mean, nobody would believe yeah. that it's real. Yeah. I mean, you could take things straight from what happened. Yes. And they would be, wow, you have such a wild imagination. So, no, nope, not nope, really. Nope. That was Tuesday. That was yeah. Tuesday. That yeah. is, that's, that's, mm, that's yeah. pretty much it. That's that so cool. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that was, uh, those were, those were some fun times back in, uh, back on Georgia Avenue there at Y105. And, um, you had been in radio for a while prior to that, right, yeah. um, moved around and, and stuff like that. Where are right. you, are you native to Augusta? Is, is Augusta uh, home? It is. I grew up here. I was actually born at a uh, St. Joseph's hospital. Oh, oh. So yeah, I did the whole thing. My uh, my dad was in the Marines, so we, mm -hmm. we did move around a good bit when he came back from Vietnam. So, a little bit of that moving around, but we ended up back here as I was as I was growing up and uh, went to Silver Bluff High School and okay. did that whole thing. Went to USC Aiken and mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. Did the theater program, uh -huh. and all mm -hmm. that kind of good stuff. So. Yeah, so when I finally ended up trying to figure out what I was going to do with myself, I was like, well, I got this, all this stuff that I'm doing, but radio just seemed like a good fit. It, yeah. I uh, I actually was uh, I was actually going to school in Charleston, and I had to do an internship at a TV station, mm -hmm. and literally it only took that one semester for me to go, I, I don't want to do that. That's not, that's <laughs> that's not, not for me. me. Yeah. <laughs> not for me at all. Yeah. I just... Uh, the biggest thing was there was a girl, a little girl that had uh, was a victim of a crime or, or something. Mm. I can't remember exact all the details mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. I just remember the reporter that I was working with going up to him and uh, to the girl's father asking him how he felt about things and all this. And I was just like, I could never do that. I yeah. could never intrude on someone's pain yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that. That was just beyond you know, and you do. You have to be. You have to be ruthless like that to mm -hmm. succeed in that job. I'm just. I, it's not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not a, for me. Yeah, it's a. It's a different. Uh, different type of person that can separate themselves. You know, the to to operate still with humanity, but to to op, to dis, disassociate yourself from right. it a bit. Yeah. So that you can get the details of the story. Yeah. And, I'm not sure I have that. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, it's it's a different. I mean, it's and, tough. You know, yeah, for the folks that do that, that's great. Yeah. You know, we do need folks that report the news and sure. report it honestly and everything like that. But yeah, yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't be me either. Yeah. It's, I just because I'd be blubbering and that wouldn't be any. Because <laughs> I mean, I cry at like car commercials and stuff like that. It's like <laughs> that would be no good. Same, same. So mm. what was your uh, what was your so what was your first 
foray into radio then. So if you were going to school for this other thing. Right. Uh, well, actually, the one of the guys at the TV station that I was interning at um, worked at a, a radio station down in Charleston. And he was like, look, we're looking for people. Um, you know, we need people desperately if you can you know, you can probably get a show on the air. And I was like, I couldn't be on the air. Me? Mm-hmm. No, I couldn't possibly. Uh, literally, I did weekends, Saturday nights specifically. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would focus on a particular CD and play like deep cuts off of it. And oh, wow. all. it was wild because the guy that owned the radio station was had been the accountant there. And it had always been his dream to own a radio station, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. It was the most fun. Yeah. We had the guy that was doing uh, the morning show. Um, he was just a plethora of information for me. Like, I love people that I can learn stuff from mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And he was just, I mean, he was so funny. And he just had, he he loved things like uh, the old Monty Python and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. you know, I love that stuff too. So I just got into it and, you know, he was all about theater of the mind and, yeah. well, you know, doing all that. And it was just so much fun to, to get into that. Yeah. But when it came to doing my own show, I was terrified. Huh. So I would, I would literally, I would read the card that had the legal ID at the top of the hour. <laughs> uh-huh. That was it. That was That's it. all I do. I just play the music. <laughs> I just play the music other than that one, like, four seconds an hour. I was so scared. <laughs> and uh, Bill calls me up and he's like, you, you know, you can you can talk if you want to. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> wow. wow. I'm good. I'm terrified. But uh, that's what I'm saying is he was so much fun and he really helped me to relax into it and just be okay with, okay, mm-hmm. this is it. This this is going to happen. Yeah. So. Well, how long did that take then? For- it actually, he actually, you know, he, he was great. He got me, got me relaxed into it and, and I managed to kind of pull myself together. Now, having done that, I still was in school at that time um, and <laughs> I, I, my my grandmother, my son was was very small at the time, and he and my grandmother offered to babysit for me. Mm-hmm. So that's how we ended up coming back here from Charleston. Mm-hmm. And uh, I I was looking for a job, and I I really had no idea how radio worked. Mm-hmm. I just was I just thought, well, I'll just go put my application in, and you know yeah. somebody will hire me. Yeah. It, it didn't occur to me that I needed an air check or right. <laughs> Some like proof that. that you talked on the right. air that you. Or, just, or you probably we, we probably got it, got into radio around the same time, so that was back when you actually had to have a license. Yeah, to be on you had to have, yeah. to have a telephone. What was it? Telephone? Not a telephone operator's license, but it basically it was a tele radio, tele, yeah, tele radio, radio operator's yeah. license that you had to uh, take a test for, yeah. so that you could open I think a microphone. I, I think I was literally one of the last people to ever take that test. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it, it wasn't it wasn't long like after I got my license that they started to where you could just pay for the te- pay, right. pay for the license and then right. you had to pay for it like you had to pay for it annually. Then it's like, well, now you pay for it once and it's it's good forever. And then they were like, screw it, we're just not going to do the test. You don't need a test anymore. Anybody can be on the radio. I'm like, <laughs> great, this is quality control. This is awesome. Really good for my self esteem. <laughs> yes, yes, especially after having to take that test. It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. So we, so you, so you now you're trying to get a job in radio. Yeah, and I, uh, I talked to a few people. I remember talking to Jeff Sanders at 96 mm-hmm. RXR, mm-hmm. and uh, he said he had some uh, part time positions open. And I was like, Yeah, that's not going to work for me. I, I really need a full time job. But thanks, and, mm-hmm. and I just went on about my way. So I didn't understand the whole you get a part time job and work your way up. Right, thing. right. That just didn't. It's like, no, I need full time, so yeah. bye. Right, right. Till you can come back <laughs> like with I, that. I look back on it now and I'm like, God, what an <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Well that's it's <laughs> like my first my first job was at ninety six RXR, but I was an intern. Uh huh. So I mean I was I was splicing promos on a reel to reel and I'd run the board for uh the morning show for, for the morning zoo with Tony uh Tony Powers, Tony and, Powers Tony and Anita, yeah, yeah. yeah. and Anita Man, Anita Man, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was my first. There was no pay at all. Right. It was just, <laughs> hey, come and spend your all of your uh, free waking hours here outside of school. Right. I was still in. I was still in high school at that point. Oh I was, wow! I was 
15. Yeah, I wasn't um, I wasn't anywhere near radio at that time yeah. in my life. So but, I think I was 22 when I got into it. Well, I, yeah, I didn't get a paying gig until I was probably, I was in, you know, almost in my 20s. Yeah. But uh, well, now, the only other time I had been to BBQ once before because my mom was dating, um, what's his name? Buddy. Car. Buddy Carr? Yeah. Oh, wow. She was going out with him, and he was trying to impress you know, her by being super nice to me. Mm. And I was just like, whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but it was fun. I, I just remember it's like, oh, it's so dirty here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, you know, and, and that's one of the things that people don't understand. That you can walk into a brand new radio station. They could have just literally built it. Yeah. And it is going to smell of burnt coffee and cigarettes, <laughs> even if it's a no smoking building. Somehow. When I look back on it now, BBQ is probably one of the better ones I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. The place, uh, the building that I worked in down in Savannah, I-95, was, mm. oh, that was horrible, horrible. I remember they had the double storm windows, you know, where you have a pane on the outside and a pane, mm-hmm. pane mm-hmm. on the inside. And there was a rat that lived in the Oh, my gosh. I have no idea how it got in there, how it got out. I don't know. But that I have was no just... clue. They were like, oh, yeah, that's just Mickey. I'm like. No, that's not. <laughs> that's not Mickey. Somebody needs to call an exterminator right now. <laughs> well, that's like that's, that's like um, you know down at the double wide uh, the, when Clear Channel took it. Well, when Cumulus sold to Clear Channel, and we there were a bunch of stations that kind of came together. We got the double wide down on Carolina Springs Avenue, and which is where Eagle was, yeah. and um, I, and actually uh, ninety six. Here's a little tidbit for you. Yeah. I was the very first person to talk on Eagle 102. Wow. Yeah. That's I was cool. the last person to talk on Froggy and the first person to talk on Eagle. <laughs> oh, okay. That's they, right. You were they did when the, it was Froggy 102. Yeah, they did the switchover during my shift. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and what was your name? <sighs> Why did I bring that up? Uh, Amphibian. Yes. That was me. It's Amphibian. okay. <laughs> <laughs> because John Patrick brought it up before on the on the episode that John was on. Yeah. He mentioned yeah. that we both knew Amphibian from yes. the Froggy days. Yeah. Yes, that was me. We had we actually had two different Jimmy Hoppas. There was a couple of them. Well, yeah. And then uh, I think John said he was. I don't remember what he was. It was, it was like Tom Crocaw because he did like news. Or yeah, something that like sounds that. about right. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I remember that Mary Liz. Nolan was Lily Pont, Lily Pad, Lily Pad, and then um, Rebecca. Uh-huh. Reared, uh, yeah, Rebecca was uh, she Sally Mander. I think she was Sally yes. Mander. Yeah. <laughs> Such fun, fun names. Now you have to understand that I was probably twenty four at this point. Mm-hmm. I'd been doing radio for a couple of years, kind of at stations, and one of my first gigs in radio the guy told me the program director said don't ever work at a station where you really love the music because you're gonna get tired of it mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's better to to not ruin the stuff that you really love right which made a sort of kind of sense to me but at the same time uh my first actual job in a station where i really love the music was the absolute best yeah <laughs> you know that was just like it was like coming home. Yeah, it's like turning your turning your stereo on and literally exactly. listening to the radio. Exactly. <laughs> Except you exactly. got to play the music. Yeah. Exactly. So, That's awesome. Yeah, I highly recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your in your time working in radio, what uh, you have a favorite story from a station that just sticks um, out? Gosh. Or or a favorite artist that you met? Or, so many. Yeah. Um. Probably. Gosh, I don't know. I should have prepared for this. Uh, <laughs> I really <okay>. didn't. <laughs> um, trying to think of some of the crazier stuff that we did. Um, uh, well, of course, you know my friend Jordan Zay. Mm-hmm. The funniest thing I think was we went backstage at um, Pearl Jam. Mm. We uh, we had hung out with his their record rep. The guy took us to dinner somewhere in Atlanta, some fancy schmancy place, and. Uh, he started telling the record rep was asking him. He started talking about his band that he was in, mm-hmm. 
And of course, the record rep's sucking up to him. So he's like, oh, well, what, what's the name of your band? What's that all about? Mm -hmm. And in deadpan, he's like, uh, we are a TLC cover band. And uh, I do left eye. And Mich <laughs> Michelle does. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to sit there with a straight face and keep keep it going. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally almost choked on my food. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. And uh, I think most of my really crazier stories come from him and silly yeah. things that I, I was kind of an instigator. Like I would tell him to do stuff and he'd be like, yeah, that's a good idea. That's good. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think probably the one that uh, his his morning show partner at 96X was Fish. Mm -hmm. And Fish had been trying to get uh, some jerseys with their names on them. Mm -hmm. Our names on them because he got me one too. And uh, I convinced I convinced Jordan. It was a show that we were doing. I, I'm pretty sure it was actually at James Brown. Mm -hmm. But it was... Before it was James Brown, mm -hmm. um, obviously. But it, <laughs> I don't remember who the band was. I really don't. I just remember it was a huge crowd. Mm -hmm. And we were going out to uh, do the introductions and stuff. And I was like, you should throw your jersey into the crowd. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Fish was so angry. He had spent months trying to get those <laughs> jerseys. And he us. threw it out he the first, first First thing we did. First yeah. time we were him, we threw him out in the crowd. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, that is that's classic Zay, though. Yeah, but somebody has a jersey with Zay on the back well, of it. It's <laughs> so one of a kind. Um, yeah, I remember one of my not finer moments uh, involved you and me and the Bare Naked Ladies in oh, Atlanta. That was, uh, that was a great. It was again. It was one of these. You know, hey, some winners get to go see a private concert yeah. with Bare Naked Ladies and photo op and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I was a huge Bare Naked Ladies fan. Yeah. And we got there and this was this was like in a warehouse. It was in like some industrial park yeah. in some sort of little like warehouse. <laughs> and they were set up and they did like a five song set. It was really not much of anything. There were no chairs. I, I remember people having to sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. Um and then afterwards, it was like, okay. Was, and again, the total group of people maybe, maybe was like 50. <laughs> yeah. It was not a huge group of people. Yeah. But they decided that for the end, when you're going to do pictures, it was going to be group pictures. So it was like me and you and like half of the group, like 25 people with bare naked ladies. And then they did another group with, yeah. and I just did not like that at all. <laughs> and I had taken, I had taken my camera to do like this is this is before digital cameras, so it was a film camera to take photos that we would then scan and put on the website or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and I remember standing outside waiting for them to leave and yelling, "I stole your soul! <laughs> I stole your soul!" As they were coming out down the steps, <laughs> I'm stealing your souls. Not one of my brighter moments. Yeah, it was fun, though. Yeah, it, it was, was a fun trip. It was a fun day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and the thing is, is like that type of stuff would happen on the regular, you mm -hmm. know, because you just never knew who was going to stop in station. Right. Uh, some artists going from Atlanta to Columbia for whatever reason needed to get gas. And they're like, oh, well, let's go by the let's go to go go to Y105 while we're here and right. decide to bring you know, wife savers chicken for lunch or something like that. Just, <laughs> yeah. just stuff all the time. And people that weren't that don't do radio don't understand that, but also don't understand how little we got paid. Right. It, it was basically for the perks. It was. <laughs> you know, you, you, you got did it, it for the perks. You got into radio because you because you loved it because yeah. you were you know like the entertainment. You liked the music. It wasn't because you needed to keep lights on at a house. Right. Because <laughs> like, of that. Well, I remember at my first job saying something about you know I just want to make enough to support me and my son. And the lady that was doing middays at the time just busted out laughing. She was like, "Good luck with that." <laughs> and see, and that's the clue we all should have taken. Exactly. Like, um, so so many red flags. <laughs> So many. so many red flags. <laughs> just right. wasn't picking up on them. <laughs> we were all just colorblind to all of them. Yeah. I, well, and also I was so, I had never really had any other kind of job. So I didn't yeah. really understand that we weren't well paid. 
That's true. Stupid as that sounds. No, no I, I just didn't. It, it it didn't occur to me, and because I wasn't doing it for the money. Right. Uh, oh, okay. they're you mean they're paying me to do this to talk on the phone and yeah. listen to music? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is odd how that when you're inside the bubble that you yeah. don't realize yeah. what outside the bubble is either. Yeah. But you also, you know, I remember when I first got out of radio having to buy a CD. I didn't know what <laughs> that was all about. Yeah. I was like, and this whole Taylor Swift thing with the tickets and all. Yeah. I just. I have a hard time relating to it. I haven't bought concert tickets yeah. in forever. I bought concert tickets. It's like you just call up the rep and say, hey, I need to. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's not your town. Literally, you yeah. know people at a, either you Somebody call somewhere. someone. Yeah. You either call someone at a station or you call <laughs> the actual rep themselves. You're like, hey, yeah. can I go to Atlanta? Can I get a couple tickets? Yeah, sure. You sure, know? sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it can definitely change your perspective on both sides of that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Definitely one of my favorite backstage moments would have been meet and sting. Yeah. That was fun. That was so fun. And uh, let's see, who else? Um, I guess the Goo Goo Dolls were, it was a fun show. It was just a sad show because we knew that was going to be the last hurrah for 96X. So yeah. it's kind of a in between, but it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was still a fun show. Yeah. yeah. Having people write your name all over their bodies and stuff. That's so weird. It's but, so weird. But it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're and you're still in radio though. Sort of, yeah. Sort of. Yeah. So you're not you you you're now a, a station manager? Yeah. yeah. Uh I I was actually I was in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa. I was doing mornings at a news talk station and uh par, well, I was doing middays at the uh Classic Rock, which is very much like Eagle. Mm -hmm. Even they had Bob and Tom instead of John Boy and Billy. Mm -hmm, <laughs> That's mm -hmm. basically the only difference. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, my mom was ill and needed my help. So just kind of dovetailed at the same time that the radio station was getting flipped to a different format <laughs> and something that I wasn't interested in doing. So yeah. we just packed it all up and came home. Yeah. So been here taking care of my mom ever since yeah yeah, yeah. i uh when i first got back there there was just no radio jobs available i mean there was just nothing oh. it was like a desert <laughs> well yeah and i mean uh when because i got let go with well you know you, the thing is is everybody has gone through either changes in ownership mm -hmm. and you've made it through and you're like okay and then at some point it always will catch you at right. some point. Ninety six X was a huge learning lesson for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> life wise, because it's like we were so we were doing so well in ratings. Mm -hmm. We had these great promotions. We had these huge concerts, and yeah. I mean, it was all just we just didn't have people selling advertising for us, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, that's a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have money coming in. Mm -hmm. You don't have radio station anymore yep. so yeah unfortunately uh that that didn't last too long but <laughs> yeah. well and that's the thing is like when i you know when i got let go it was 3499 other people right <laughs> let go that same day yeah you know and i always talk about you know we all we all left the same day all with the same skill set yeah and, and that, what do you do and with there's that? no jobs <laughs> literally they just got rid of those yeah. four thousand you know jobs so yeah. it's, there's what do we do? How do I turn this into something that? How do I turn know, a brain full of useless knowledge into some sort of marketable skill? Exactly. You know, only so many game shows you can host. I'm exactly. Like, that's when you start your own trivia yeah. company and start doing trivia at, at that's bars. That's why there's so many trivia places around <laughs> yeah. here. Right. <laughs> All run by X Radio. Uh, exactly. Um, so. But yeah, well, I mean, and it's great that you've been able to stay in the industry that yeah, I mean, you, that you fell in love with. I mean, it has changed. So it much has over changed. The so very much and and really i say i'm kind of in radio because i'm not on the air anymore mm -hmm. you know i'm just doing like a it's a lot of paperwork and it's a lot of you know being on other people's time mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not it's not the uh exciting fun thing that that it used to be but yeah you know you gotta grow up at some point i guess i guess so <laughs> i mean that's always always Fought against when you right? the radio. You fight against. Exactly. Up, I always think of Cosmo. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> like you would never, ever imagine how old he was just mm -mm. by being around him because he was just so Cosmo. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cosmo in your face. Mm hmm Yeah. So. It's, but it's like I said, there was no, no other group of folks I'd want to be around. Right. And, and people that would pretty much do anything for you if they could. You no know? doubt. I yeah. mean, again, we're all in the same poor boat. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you need a ride, we're not the and, ones that you want to borrow money from. But, but. If, like, if you need a ride, more than likely yeah. they'll come pick you up, exactly. even if it's in a station van. Yeah, they'll just <laughs> that's that's how we got around. Oh, there's another good station story. Eagle 102. I'm driving home from a remote, and of mm -hmm. course, the remotes involved uh, going to the place of business, setting up a table, setting up all the stuff on the table, mm -hmm. <clears throat> having pizza for people or whatever. Uh, so you had to tip the driver of the pizza place, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then you'd have the pizza would last maybe two minutes, <laughs> right? Because all of the sales folks exactly. at the place you had the remote at came and got the free pizza, thinking exactly. it was for them and yeah. not for listeners. And you might have you might have three or four CDs that you had to give away during that time, and of course they all wanted those right. as well. So I'm like, do you want the CD or do you want the business that's going to come in looking for the looking CD? for the CD? Right. You know? <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. You just think about it. Yeah, you know? they never quite connected those dots. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. But anyway, so I did my. Oh, and we had the the uh, big blow up thing oh, too. Yeah. So I had, and, and I, I think about it now. I did all that stuff by myself. That's kind of weird. Like mm -hmm. now, I can't imagine doing it. Right. Be like, uh, no, yeah, not for what you're paying me. Yeah, it's huge inflatables that had to be. Stake down, and it's like you know, it's two stories tall. And, and then big country too. Not only did they have, they had stuff. It wasn't a blow up thing. They had the uh, barbecue grill that you mm -hmm. had to set up and cook hot dogs for people. <laughs> yep. No, I'm not doing that. Mm. Oh, and that. Rem speaking of speaking of things you won't do for people, you got frozen in a block of ice. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. In front of Kmart. Yeah, I did. I did. Do you know I still have vertigo from that? <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, no, uh, just, not much longer. Yeah. Just stay in there. Stay not in much there. longer. Stay in there. Oh. It's so funny because the I, I laid back into the thing and, and there's like little panels on the side and a panel on top of you. And the first thing I see when I lay down is, does your back hurt? Because it will. <laughs> 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 I got pulley punches here. Yeah, it's just gonna it's, hurt. It's gonna hurt because you can't lay in one position for <laughs> however many, mm -hmm. uh, whatever hours. I don't know how long it was. Uh, I think I was supposed to be there for forty-eight hours, and I got, I got, well, I got vertigo from people stepping on. It was on a trailer, yeah, and so they were stepping on the trailer, and it was constantly. It was like being on the ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Get me out of yeah. there. And I remember going to the emergency room after that, and the doctors were just like, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 I'm in radio. <laughs> you see the station T-shirt right. that I have on? It's, this should explain anything. <laughs> it's just great. The looks on their faces is like, you did, you did what? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> But yeah, good times. Good times. Good times. <laughs> so, so what's going on with you now? What do you got going on? Like, you know, uh, you're still like say you're a station manager, so you got paperwork and stuff. But, yeah, it's but. all a it's a it's a Christian talk station. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of uh, preachers and just motivational speakers, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really just managing the station. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to yeah. put it other than that. Yeah. It's. Uh, Making sure everything gets in on time and commercials get in on time and all that kind of stuff. So not the most exciting thing. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I, it, it was there for me when I really needed something. For sure. And that was great. So, yeah. so that's awesome. So, and, uh, uh, so outside of work, though, what do you got, you got, uh, what do you got going on outside of work? I really have. Uh, my mom's got animals. Um, she has her farm, which has horses and we have a lot of dogs now, unfortunately. <laughs> That's my fault, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm a sucker for uh, a cute dog. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, uh, I've learned a lot about taking care of horses. Oh, Didn't wow. know a thing about it. Wow. I did not. 
My mom grew up with horses. She was uh, actually kind of a little TV star around here back in the day. Yeah. The building where BBQ was used to be Channel 6. Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. it was Channel Channel 6. I think it was. Um, Yeah. But you remember the studio that we saw in the the bottom part of the building? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, She used to do the show that became Trooper Terry, but it was called Buona John. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the hosts on it too. And so so from the time she was like a teenager, she was on TV. Punky's Ponies was on TV. And so my entire childhood, it's like Punky and her daughter. And my mom would say, this is Punky's monkey. (laughs) 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 So yeah. That's awesome. Funny stuff. But yeah, she's, it was kind of funny. Uh, I remember <laughs> the first time I was working with uh, Mark Summers, and I told him, yeah, my mom was Punky from Punky's Ponies. He's like, I used to ride those ponies. I'm like, this is so weird. This is, this is, <laughs> this is weird. And that's a weird thing to say. And... <laughs> but okay, Mark. But literally everybody, you know, they always had her, all the people up on the hill, they always had their birthday parties with my mom's ponies. and. It's pretty cool, though. Strange. I mean, <laughs> and and so I mean, you're just now learning, or, yeah. or about horses and yeah. horse care and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I never did it. So I, like, I, but because you know, she as she grew up and got older, she didn't have the ponies anymore, uh, and she got into law enforcement. And so uh, when uh, when <laughs> when I was in high school, she was a juvenile detention. Officer. Oh wow! <laughs> Which was great for me. Let me tell you, <laughs> your social life was wow. popping. Yeah. Wow. It's great. <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> I got away with nothing. <laughs> oh, I, well, that's my mom was an OR nurse, so I yeah. was, there were never sick days. Yeah, there was no such thing. No, no yeah. such thing as yeah. as a sick day. Like, suck you know. it up, kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff but yeah so um so yeah taking care of my mom now and um it's funny because you know she's always been the outdoor person she's always been the one that i just never cared about stuff like that i was <laughs> i'd rather sit in the air conditioner thank you very much right <laughs> play my little video games and <laughs> right <laughs> had no interest in all of that so i've had to learn uh, a lot about it, and I've had to uh, just just basically just learn how to push through it. Yeah. You know, whatever you're doing, it's, they, the horses don't care if you're not feeling good that day. <laughs> they want their food. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they don't care. Um, their sympathy only goes so far. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, <clears throat> so what's bringing you joy? Uh Rescuing the dogs has been a big thing for me. Really? It really has. It's it's helped me a lot. And I don't know if it's, I guess you could get into the whole why it's so whatever. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but I don't know. I mean, it, it, there's just nothing more grateful <laughs> in the yeah. world than, than a dog that does not have a home and you can help them find their way. And yeah, it's really, I don't know, makes me feel good. I like it. Yeah. Is there a <laughs> certain like group that you help with? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not that I'm particularly associated with. And mm-hmm. I did find a, I had a dog that came up into, uh, well, my mom's property is surrounded by woods. Mm-hmm. So we have the part where the horses are in the middle mm-hmm. <laughs> in our house, and then the woods are all around us. Well, there's people drop dogs off there all the time. Oh, I mean, wow. it's really, really crazy. So you can, at any given time, you can hear dogs in the, in the woods mm-hmm. and <laughs> just hear them. Oh. Uh, actually, I just heard a, a whole group of them the other day. But um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's it's a problem, and especially coming from. Iowa, coming from Des Moines, where there, there's that just doesn't exist. Yeah, they don't have lots and lots of animals because I guess because the weather, they don't last very long, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you just don't see strays around, and there's so many strays. <laughs> My mom lives in Beach Island, so there's just every yeah. corner you're gonna right. see it, right. and uh, so I don't know. 
little bit I can do. Uh, there's a group out of uh, over in Aiken that uh, they gather up some of these strays, puppies especially, and they'll fly them up to New Jersey, give them a home. So that's kind of cool. That is awesome. Awesome. Have you ever like gone with them on one of those transports? I would love to. I've never been on that end of it. It's just been a more of a kind of trying to trap them and get them mm-hmm. get them get safely in the- custody. Gotcha. <laughs> that kind of thing. I had one dog. I think I was telling you your wife about it earlier. Uh, she just she was pretty wily. I mean, I could not get hold of this dog. Mm-hmm. Um, four years I tried to catch her. Oh wow! <laughs> Only time I would ever see her. Is after she'd had her puppies and she would bring them to me. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> she was she was not the best mom, but, but, she, but I mean, but she knew where she could bring them that yeah. they would be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, and and she knew that that I would feed her, and I I just I can't see a hungry dog and not yeah. feed it. I just I'm not capable of that. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah for sure. So I uh, I eventually bought her a big dog bed and she started sleeping on the dog bed mm-hmm. on the front porch and uh she you know i'd, I'd put the traps out and she'd just kind of look at them and be like right mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever her daughter actually was the one that i kept hatching <laughs> mm-hmm. in the traps because mm-hmm. she's pretty dumb <laughs> uh. <laughs> she would always fall for it no matter what but we got her caught and got her fixed and she still lives at the house actually she's, oh. she won't let you touch her she's still feral in that way but she's super sweet and she'll yeah. like come up behind you and like, lick your hand or whatever mm-hmm. as long as it's on her terms right. she's cool with it <laughs> That's awesome. so yeah and did you I, I mean so mm-hmm. she's staying around the house Is, mm-hmm. do you find that that hard or, or you don't have them long enough to kind of get attached to it because that, that would be my problem. Yeah. Like if I rescued, you know, a dog and it's like, and it takes more than like two days to get it to somewhere else. Yeah. You're like, well, we've got another dog. And then it was it, so hard. It was yeah. so hard, especially when they were really young and they were so cute. Mm-hmm. Just, you just fall in love with them. It's so hard to let them go, but I couldn't keep all of them. There was right. just no way. I would say probably 35. 30, wow. 35, 36 dogs that I found homes for over the years. So, I, I mean, I wish I could keep them all. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could just run one of those sanctuaries where you just... Yeah, <laughs> just let them run free. Just live your there. life, yeah. babies. <laughs> I would love that. But, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not independently rich. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, but you're still doing great work. I mean, you know, whether it's... It, I, you know, you're not getting paid to do it or anything like that. I think that's one of those things that to have something at the end of the day, when you lay down to go to sleep, you can sleep well knowing that you helped a creature that couldn't help itself. Right. Yeah, for sure. It feels good. All right, Michelle, this is the second segment of the show where we dive a little bit deeper into you. We talk a little bit more about mental health. Um, I'm a, firm believer that everybody has those kind of dark days, those down days. Sometimes the day you just, oh, you just don't feel like getting out of bed. You may not have like diagnosed depression or anxiety, but I think we all have those kind of things right. that we go through. Uh, and uh, one of the things that that depression wants to tell you is that you're alone. You're the only one that feels like that, but, but we're not. Right. And so being able to share your message that, hey, I'm there too. I've been there. This is how I've got out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what I do when I feel those times. I think that's really important. So for you, how do you keep the darkness at bay? Well, um, like I said, the uh, the dogs help a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, spending time with my son. I mean, I've, I've made more of an effort. He actually, he lives about... Mm, uh, couple of miles away from us he has his own own house his own cars his girlfriend and he lived together and you know he's always been my my rock you know he's always been my go-to and now he doesn't need me anymore Mm -hmm. (laughs) i have a little bit of that empty nest thing going on but you know you have to learn to separate and let people live their own life kind of thing so it's tough but when we do get together it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. He's such an interesting dude and he's just a good guy. Mm-hmm. I, I like hanging out with him. So yeah. that's yeah. fun. Yeah. I love Brent. Uh, I remember 
Um, I mean, I, seeing him grow up, yeah. you know, from from Y one hundred five and and uh, Jacob and Jeremy were a little older than him. Yeah. I mean, not a little; they were younger than him. Yeah, I was going to say uh, uh, growing up, but to uh, to just to see, you know, because I'll see his posts on on. Uh, you know, Facebook and things like that. Um, <laughs> the filibuster. <yeah>. Yes. <laughs> filibuster. Um, he, he does go on his rants, but I promise he's not as crazy as he comes off <laughs> Facebook sometimes. <laughs> I, well, that's a, I feel he like just, sometimes he does it just to poke the bear. Right. I know? mean, there's no question he is on the spectrum mm-hmm. I, I, for sure. I have no idea where mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he's chosen not to, you know, get and and I'm fine with that. <laughs> I yeah. think I think it's okay for people to be different and yeah. not uh, I, he's never going to be the person that that fits into whatever round hole square peg that's mm-hmm. him, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> completely, but I think it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I mean in and, and for you to have uh fostered obviously a, a mm-hmm. nurturing environment for him to be himself. Right. Yeah, I mean that says a lot about you and <laughs> and the person you are. And I mean, I feel like you're not a square peg, round hole, you know, person either. For sure, I'm a weirdo. I <laughs> <laughs> got a trapezoid and a parallelogram. That's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's again one of those things when you when you can be in a place where you feel comfortable being yourself, right? Whether it's you know, whether it's in a family. Whether it's with a group of friends, finding that That's place. really hard for me, and especially lately. And I know this is going to sound weird, but I, uh, because I work alone, and now, I mean, I used to go to the office and work alone, and now I'm pretty much working from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my mom's quite ill sometimes, so sometimes she's, you know, not even awake during the day. So it's mm-hmm. just me and the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> I do worry about being, am I turning into a weirdo now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because I literally have no social interaction with people or, you know, Facebook might be the only time I talk to people and that's right. not real interaction, you know? Right. It's just not. It's not normal. So, so like I said, it's it's so nice to be able to go out and, and see people. I, I, I know that I probably freak people out because I'm like, hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I haven't seen you in forever. I haven't seen anybody in forever. Right. <laughs> but you're right. But that is good. That is good to have that opportunity to do that. And again, to f- to feel comfortable being your yeah. your weirdo self, you know, and and not have to put up any pretense. Uh, you know, I think we've reached a point in society un- that. Everybody should be able to be who they who they are, right? Without having to put a mask on or anything they, like that. Well, unless unless you have to put your mask on. <laughs> well, yes, unless, <laughs> unless you got the COVID. Yes, um, but to but to be your be your true self and to you know, whether you're letting your freak flag fry, fly or or letting it fry, whatever you know. It's, I prefer to fry mine. Yes, I like my mm. flag fried. Yes, Jeez, everything's better fried. Yes. Um, but yeah, just it's important to have that that ability to. I think I think that's a lot of confidence in yourself to be yourself. Right. You know, yeah. it's a lot of self love, not <laughs> a lot of self loathe. Yeah. You know, you have to love yourself enough to say, you know what, I'm okay with this. <laughs> the people that are going to be okay with this, they're those are my people. The they people are that my, aren't, yeah, those are my people. Yeah. yeah. The, the people that aren't okay with it, they're not my people. Yeah. And and to be able to seek out your people and find your tribe, right? Um, I think I've had, I've always been lucky. I think I've always kind of fallen into people like that mm-hmm. in the different places that I've been. Like at Y one hundred five, you and Dale, mm-hmm. y'all were my tribe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, and it's like I knew it instantly. I knew I can tell instantly <laughs> when we met. Yeah. That we were going to be friends. Yes. That w- we were going to be really good friends for a long time. And yeah. that same, Dale, same thing. Yeah. Um, no matter how weird he gets. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about a freak flag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I love him and I love you. And I'm just, it, it, it's like, it's hard to explain to other people. It's like, oh, yeah, I've known him for a long time, but that's, 
that's not I've known lots of people for a long time. Right. I don't feel the same way about them that I do you, you know. <laughs> it's like my my heart smiles when I think about you and Dale oh. and and our little our silly little times. Yeah. That we had. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you're right. It's like when you find those people that your 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 life forces vibrate in harmony. Yeah. You know, For and sure. you can and you can feel that that energy, and you feed off of each other, and you, I mean, because that's a lot of what it was. Whenever we would get it, it, it was like a you know two hour long improv, right? Of <laughs> of yes and, like how far are we going to go with whatever this is? We can take it. Further, we can, we can I know push, we can. We could push it one more level. <laughs> we could cross one more line. We can always depend on Dale to bring it to an end. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's like here's the line, and then there's Dale over in the next county. It's like, all right, Dale, we have to stop now. Thanks. Uh, but it's always such a, always such a good time. In the in that, like I said, uh, those are those are important people to, to hang on to. I love those times when when. You, like your face hurts because you've been smiling so much. <laughs> yes, you just been laughing. You're like yeah. your, your side is because you've just been laughing, and yeah. you, or you can't catch your breath. Yeah, and you can't cry anymore because you've been crying because you're laughing so yeah. much. And that's what it's like to work with Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Until uh, I pee on your tire at a so, remote, or I puke on you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> Find yourself some friends like that, friends. <laughs> oh, stories we could tell. <laughs> but, and, and like you said, nobody would believe them. No. Nobody would believe them. Well, other radio people would believe them. But yeah. That's, that's about it. Yeah. But, but I, I actually can top that story. Mm hmm. With another limo story oh. when I was in Iowa. Okay. So before we, we, all right, one of the first weekends that I was there, we were taking a group to see Sticks and Ted Nugent and somebody else. Oh, Cheap Trick. Mm. Uh, Cheap Trick, Sticks, and Ted Nugent. But they were playing in uh, Council Bluffs. I, mm -hmm. think, I think Council Bluffs, which was two hours away. Anyway, the point was that we had this huge stretch limo that we were taking people with uh, with us, and it was a couple of us from the station. And I was like, yeah, I don't have a great track record with <laughs> limos. <laughs> so I definitely well, need to be sitting in a, a seat that's facing forward. Right. I don't do not well. On the side. On and the not side. backwards. Yeah. Not, not good with that. So <laughs> let me sit. And so I explained that to them, and everybody was like, okay, okay. So we do the thing. <laughs> we go the two hours out, it was, and it was a great trip. We had, you know, a couple of listeners. I think it was probably four or five listeners. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, we may have had more people from the station, actually, than we did have listeners, mm -hmm. which is not surprising for a radio station right, right. <laughs> uh, So we're all having fun, and it's a good time, and... Uh, we're on the way back, and uh, I the there were two girls that were sitting in. I was in the back, you know, facing forward. There were two girls behind me, and they had been drinking probably since eight a.m. I think is what they said. Mm. And they brought a cooler full of Jello shots as well. <laughs> mm. So I mean, it had been pretty long party for them. Yeah. Uh, so at some point during this drive home, I'm like, I feel something wet on the back of my head. And I'm like, and I look around and every, all of a sudden every day can smell vomit. And of course I told them about my situation and, uh, Clutch, the guy that did afternoon there, he's like, Michelle, I was like, it wasn't me this time. I swear to God, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. Yeah, the girls in the back. Uh -huh. I don't know if it was just one of them or both of them or what, but that whole limo just reeked. Yikes. And it was all in my hair. Yikes. <laughs> so I, I got to be friends with Clutch's girlfriend who washed it all out of my hair for, because I was literally, I was just like in shock. I'm sitting there going, what do you do? I can't 
be upset about it because she's a listener. <laughs> right. But I'm really upset. I'm about really it. upset. About this. <laughs> uh, so she washed it out of my hair, and I felt better, and and uh, we got some air, and the girl, you know, never did apologize to me for it either. Oh, why? Why should she? <laughs> She doesn't even remember it happened. I uh, probably not. No. If she was going since eight a.m., yeah. she doesn't remember it happened. So, so that was my first trip to uh, <laughs> with that was with KGGO. Wow. Yeah. And let me just say, what a waste of gasoline and limos are not comfortable for more than in town driving. Yeah. They are not made for long hauls. Yeah. A a, a limo <laughs> from Augusta. To Atlanta is miserable. It yeah. doesn't matter which seat you're in, but especially if you I get felt vertigo. So bad for but, the driver because he had to clean that. I mean, that's one reason yeah. why we were out walking around because he was driving. He was cleaning oh. the back end out. So I was oh, <laughs> like, my gosh. that's gotta suck. Yeah. <laughs> so, but luckily you had somebody that could help you. Yeah. With that. So and, yeah. Yeah, Jenny definitely became my best friend in <laughs> Iowa after that. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a tight bond that that, uh, that forms yeah. around cleaning someone, people out of someone's hair. Someone that will do that for you is a good friend. <laughs> All right, Michelle, this is the third segment of the show. It's time now for the Fast Five. Oh, no. The Fast Five. <laughs> it's time now for the Fast Five. Woo-hoo. Fast Five. Sorry, I don't have a theme song. Yeah. Right? I'm still working workshops workshop some things. Brent will write one for you. Yeah, that's what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Fast Five is powered by Poddex. It's an app created by my friend Travis Brown. It's a great uh uh, icebreaker questions or different categories and uh, there's an app on your favorite app store whether your iPhone or Android or whatever. There's an app for that. There's an app for that and there's also uh, physical decks you can get so if you just want to keep some weird questions in your pocket to whip out on people <laughs> on the bus or something you can do that. As a matter of fact if you go to com slash pod decks use promo code chew you can get 10% off your physical decks but I'm going to use the app here uh, no wrong answers. Just okay. first thing, come off the top of your head. Okay. All right, you ready? No pressure. Um. Okay. Here we go. Where is the weirdest place that you've gone to the bathroom? Hmm. Here, right like now. Like at my house. Right now. Oh, in the chair. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Perfect. You got the number of that limo driver. I can <laughs> see if he does urine. Clean up as well. No, definitely the the woods for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the worst. Uh, I we're it's it's not necessarily an odd place to go to the bathroom, but I remember being in Savannah for St. Patrick's uh, weekend, yeah. and I was in line to get to the porta potty, and it the porta potty was not on level ground; it was kind of at an angle, so and it was full. <sighs> So there was like this waterfall that was coming, and I was probably about still six, eight people away from the thing, and I I happened to finish drinking what was in my cup, and I had shorts on, so I peed in line (laughs) for the porta potty, Mm. and then when I got to the porta potty, I just emptied the cup into the, and then I did get rid of the cup as well because. I would have forgotten and then got a refill at a window if oh, I had to have thrown that away. But uh. yeah, I think I, I lived in Savannah, so I think St. Patrick's Day, pretty much the entire city is a bathroom. Oh, oh yeah, so. oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and seeing yeah. people talk about puking, just puking in the gutters, <laughs> just let just walk and then keep walking. Go get another, go get another mar- uh, what is it, hurricane or margarita or whatever it is. Yeah, I do remember one time because I was driving back and forth from here to. Uh, or from Savannah, I was still living in Savannah and working here in Augusta. And I would come up and and on fr- on Monday mornings, I would be driving from Savannah to here, mm-hmm. and I had to pee so bad, oh, it was mm-hmm. terrible. It was painful. I had to go so bad, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to stop because I was going to be late for work. Right. So I tried to do it into a cup while I was driving down the road. Mm. That did not go well. Did not go well. It did not. <laughs> you probably ended up being later than you would have. If you yeah. Just, yeah. I should have just stopped. <laughs> just 
top of the Waffle House. Let's go there. <laughs> There's nothing there. There's nothing between here and there. Yeah, that's, tr- that's just... true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's back roads. Yeah. yeah. yeah and there's... I was coming up through South Carolina, so oh, that's like. So, yeah, there's yeah. even more, even less stuff. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. All right, question number two. What is the disadvantage of playing things safe? <sighs> Boredom. Yeah. Boredom. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know because I don't really do that very. Yeah. Often. Yeah. Don't Just in general, in safe. general, in life, I like to. I feel like if I'm, I'm here, I might as well go for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I'm going to tell the guy that I'm not going to take this this part time job at yeah. the radio station because I need full time. I need full time, buddy. So, I don't know what you're t- talking about with this part time jazz. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> makes perfect sense. Boredom. Awesome. All right. Question number three. What's the last thing you've done that you were really proud of? Brent. I made a baby. Yeah. I made a really cool baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, I'm the most proud of him. Yeah. 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 He's, he's pretty awesome. Yeah. He's pretty awesome. I feel like you've probably done some things, but I, I would agree as a father, it's hard to top them being most proud of, right. of that. The coolest thing is, I mean, he, he's 30, he turned 33 this year. Wow. I'm like, wow, you're the same age as Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, but the cool thing is being an adult, him being an adult and still liking him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. That is I like awesome. That. that is awesome. All right, question number four. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Here. No, I'm, I'm in... In this room? In this room. I want to live here. <laughs> but someone peed in the chair. I so. did. <laughs> it's okay. It's warm. It's warm. Yeah. It's warm and they like me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, I I don't... I mean, I used to fantasize about going to all these places. I wanted to go to Paris and mm-hmm. I wanted to go to Amsterdam and I wanted to go to London and... I don't really have that wanderlust anymore mm. so much. Um, I have traveled a lot in the United States. I've seen a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I moved to Iowa, I'd never been to the Midwest. Mm. Didn't had no idea what I was in for. Driving up there, um, from the time you leave St. Louis to get to Des Moines, it's about six hours of nothing but cornfields wow i was terrified i was like what have i gotten myself into (laughs) what am i doing with my life and then it was just like i pulled into the edge of town and light shone and Uh rainbows and cupid smiled yeah Yeah. (laughs) and it was like a nice city it was a really nice city so yeah, I ended up being very lucky. Well, the, the cornfield set you up for for appreciating anything. Wow, dude, I was so scared. I was just like, all right, first of all, if my phone dies, what am I going to do? If I need gas, what am I going to do? Because I literally, thank goodness, I had filled up, you know, right out. I, my, actually, my grandfather had told me, don't stop in St. Louis. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, he said that. He, he said from the time he was a young man, it's been a dangerous place. So I was like, okay, well, so before I got to St. Louis, I filled up my car. So thankfully, mm-hmm. but I was really on fumes. I was like, <laughs> right, right. A couple of hours, I was just, please let me make it. Please let me make it. And, mm-hmm. whew, and then my phone was dead. And thankfully, my mom had set me up with an atlas. So I had my atlas. I still it wasn't lost right, or anything right. like that. But at the same time, when you have no phone, you don't yeah. realize how dependent you are until it's gone. One hundred percent. Yeah, because we're just so used to grabbing it, right. like you need to call or look up directions, yeah. or is this place open? Whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's what. But so, so no particular place now that you that you'd want to live. I mean, because you you lived in Savannah, so you've yeah. done kind of beaches. You've yeah, done kind of. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call Iowa mountains. No, but I mean, it's a it's 
definitely flat, more of a yeah. plains type of place. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, Midwest people, it's a different kind of people. <laughs> They're a hearty bunch. They're a hearty bunch. Um, they call it Iowa nice mm. because the people are very nice. They are mm-hmm. super nice. Um, very blunt too, though. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and a guy come out. I was doing a remote at the Iowa State Fair, which was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had been working on the rock station for a little while at that point. And so I'm doing my show live from out there. And this guy comes up and he goes, he's an older man, too. And he's like, you sound younger on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. You still want that bumper sticker, though, don't you? Yeah, give you this bumper sticker. Right? Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, and question number five. Oh, it's a classic. Toilet paper, over or under? Over. Over. Vehemently over. <laughs> like, I've changed it at people's houses before. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's the one question I've had people tell me. Said there's really only one answer to that. There is an incorrect answer, right? And under is it? Yeah, <laughs> under is the incorrect answer. So <laughs> uh, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm also team over. Yeah. All right, that's it, Michelle. Sweet. That's our that's our fast five, and that is the show. Aww, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. We definitely need to get together more often. Sure. Yeah. And uh, you know, go grab. We'll grab up Dale, and mm-hmm. we'll you know. We'll go terrorize somewhere or something Let's like do that. It. Let's do it. <laughs> if folks want to keep up with you, what's the best way for, for you? Probably Facebook. I do have other accounts on other mediums, but to be honest, I really don't pay attention to them. I'm mm-hmm. just not. It, it, I might go back to Twitter at some point. I think I have a Twitter. Mm-hmm. I haven't been there in ages, so yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. It's still there or not. Okay. I might have gotten booted on. You never know. Yeah. You never know. I mean, now you can pay for, pay for a blue check. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to pay for a blue check. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to do yeah. that. Well, I will definitely make sure I put a sure. link to uh, your Facebook. It's and easy. Show it's it's uh, facebook.com slash Mitch Rocks, M I C H R O X. There you go. Um, and again, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. This has just been awesome. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> and if you would like to support this podcast, I'd appreciate it if you bought me a coffee at chewingthefatbr.com. But until next time, look forward to we have a moment to sit a spell and chew the fat. Mm-hmm.